defined by parametric equations. So if you look at the curve to the right, it fails the vertical line test. So we can't express the curve as y equals f of x. Consider a particle moving along C. Okay, that's that point x, y, and that's the direction in which it's going. We could define x and y as a function of time t. So x would be f of t, y would be g of t. So we just switch this up. We bring in a new parameter, if you will. The graph of f of t and g of t, as t varies, is called a parametric curve. Note that these curves, or these parametric curves, has direction and orientation. T often represents time, but it can represent other values, say if we're working with trig functions, it might represent theta or an angle or such. All right, so here's an example. Let's sketch the curve represented by x equals t squared minus 4t, so that's kind of like a, par a parabola to us here, and y is equal to t minus 3. That's a linear line. And we are going to do this for 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 5. So your t values here down the column, that will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then we take the blue t's, we plug it into the green x equations up here, and we take the blue t's and we plug them into the red t's to come up with our y values. And so these are the coordinates of we want we want to plot at these particular times. So our first point is at 0, negative 3, which is right down here. Now, another thing that I'll show you uh, in class, so make sure you remind me, is how to do parametric equations in your calculator because we don't want to crunch this out by hand. Of course, we're going to let the calculator do this in the table format for us. So, and then if you notice by my point down here for 0, negative 3, we usually put a little note that this is when t was equal to 0. Then when t is equal to 1, we're going to be at negative 3, negative 2. There's your t equals 1. At t equals 2, we're at negative 4, negative 1. At t equals 3, we're at negative 3, 0. And when t is equal to 4, we're at 0, 1. And when t is equal to 5, we're at 5, 2. And so this is the direction in which our path is traveling. So when we connect this together, make sure you put in these arrows indicating the direction in which we are going. So points are plotted at equal time periods, but equal distances and particle speeds may change. All right, so if kind of looking at this curve here, I would venture a guess between t equals 1 and t equals 2, we're slowing down maybe to make this turn. And then, you know, just like NASCAR, you get to those straightaways, you start to speed up. A little bit of my redneck out. All right, so the other thing we want to do is let's find the Cartesian equation for this graph. So what you want to do is you want to solve for t in one of these two equations. Well, obviously, since there's only one t variable in y equals t minus 3, that's the one we want to solve for t. Keep it simple here. All right, then we're going to take this y plus 3, which is t, and we're going to plug that in for the two t's up here in the x equation. So x is equal to y plus 3 squared minus 4 times y plus 3. We'll FOIL, we'll distribute, we'll simplify this all out, and we get x equals y squared plus 2y minus 3. This process is called eliminating the parameter. Our parameter was t which makes sense. This would be very difficult to get the graph in our calculator because one, it doesn't pass the vertical line test and our graph can only, and our uh, calculator can only graph functions. All right, example two. Sketch the curve represented by x equals sine of t and y is equal to one minus cosine t. 
for 0 is less than t is less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, so let's choose some t values that will keep this simple. The easiest values to find for sine and cosine is when they're going to be ones and zeros. So we want to choose 0, pi over 2, and pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So those should be our t's. So when t is 0, sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, but 1 minus 1 is 0. And again, we would have your calculator crunch this out for us. So let's start plotting these points. So when t is 0, we're at 0, 0. When t is pi over 2, we're at 1, 1, right there. Again, notice the little t equals pi over 2. At t equals pi, we're at 0, 2. At 3 pi over 2, we're at negative 1, 1. And at 2 time of 2 pi, we're back to 0, 0. So I'm thinking that we're going to have a circle here. Remember when you graph circles, probably the center right here at 0, 1, a radius of 1 to the right, to the left, up 1, down 1, and we drew in our best circle. And then again, remember, put your arrows in to represent the direction in which we're traveling. Now, if we wanted to write this as a Cartesian equation, isolate the trig functions. So x equals sine of t, that's kind of already isolated but we need to get cosine of t by itself. So we could add that over to the left, subtract the y over to the right, and cosine t is equal to 1 minus y. Now, since this is a circle, and we have a Pythagorean identity with sines and cosines, that kind of represents the equation of a circle, or a Pythagorean theorem, that would be sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to 1. And what we'll do is we'll replace sine of t with the x, so this makes us x squared. And we'll replace cosine t with 1 minus y, so that becomes the binomial 1 minus y squared equals 1. And there's our Cartesian equation. Alright, so parametric equations for a circle. There's three conditions. If you're centered at 0, 0, with a radius of 1, you're kind of looking at the unit circle. So remember your trig said that x is equal to cosine t, y is equal to sine t as you go around the unit circle. All right, well, what if your radius gets bigger? Well, you might recall this in trig that then x has to equal r times cosine of t and y equals r times sine of t. That's so we can stretch out the radius from being a 1. Technically, there's a 1 being multiplied to the cosine and sine of t up here. Next, what happens when you have a center at hk and a radius of r? Then you're going to add an h to your cosine. You're going to add a k to your sine. So as we plug these into our trig identity, sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals 1, We'll do the same thing here, but now remember, we got to isolate cosine and sine, so we're dividing over the r into the x and the y. So making that substitution gives me x over r squared plus y over r squared, which is x squared over r squared. And then we can multiply r squared to both sides, and that gives you x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. All right, now... Down here, we got to do the same thing, get your cosine and sine by itself. So we subtract over the h, subtract over the k, divide over the r, divide over the r. And so sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to x minus h over r squared plus y minus k over r squared. Again, squaring the r's and multiplying them to the other side gives you that unit circle equation with the center at h, k that you've seen in the past. And I do want to apologize. I don't want to throw anybody off. I do realize, I just noticed this, that when I make the substitution, x going in for cosine, it could be over here, y squared plus x squared. 
it's addition it doesn't matter which order we add them in I'm just putting my variables in alphabetical order I apologize I guess I should have wrote this as cosine squared t plus sine squared t and it's the same here and here I apologize for that but it's still our Pythagorean identity one way or the other alright note two different sets of parametric equations may have the same graph a curve is a set of points a parametric curve represents points traced in a particular way that's why directions important example three sketch the curve represented by x equals sine of t and y equals sine squared of t so again remember that your sine goes from negative one to one so we'll let our x's make sure that they go from negative one to one so again we're, since we're working with signs let's start with negative one and that's going to be at negative pi over two then jump to zero pi over two pi three pi over two pi over two so basically hitting when is your sign at zero one zero negative one zero one all right and now all your y's are just to take all your x's and square them so squaring the negative one is a positive one squaring the positive one stays positive one and so on and so forth and your zeros just stay zeros so here if I plot negative one one and this is at t equals negative pi over two then t is at zero that puts me at zero zero pi over 2 is at 1 comma 1 oh interesting time is pi I'm back to 0 0 3 pi over 2 I am back to negative 1 1 2 pi I'm back to 0 0 so if we graph this in the order we are going in this direction kinda of looks like the bottom of a parabola so I'm going to the right and I'm turning and coming back turning and coming back I'm actually looking like a pendulum the bottom of a pendulum swing here going back and forth back and forth so here you gotta put arrows now I don't put the arrows on the line notice I put going to the right below going back to the left above and it doesn't matter which one you do how you set it up it's all the same Alright, so again, like we said, this will go back and forth on that parabol parabolic curve y equals x squared. Alright, example four, sketch the curve represented by the graphs of x equals f of t and y equals g of t. So here's my graph for x equals f of t, here's my graph for y equals g of t. So I'm going to make some assumptions here that this high point, local max, local min, is halfway between 0 and 1 this is negative 1 so I'm gonna probably make sure I hit those values so from the graph as you can see negative 1 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 1 here is your t-axis so it goes from negative 1 to 1 negative 1 to 1 on both of these x of f of t, y of g of t. Again, notice that the independent variable is the horizontal axis. The dependent variable, y or x, is the vertical axis. And that might look a little strange to you with x being on the vertical axis. All right, and like I said, since we had turning points at negative 1 half and 1 half, we're gonna to wanna to use those values. So negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, one for my t's <clears throat> so when t is negative one we're zero for the x we're zero for the y that's the point zero zero over here when I'm at negative one half up here oh, we'll guesstimate that's close to three fourths over here negative one half we're at negative one when we're at zero x is at one y is at zero when we're at one half, x will say three fourths, y will say one. When x is at one, excuse me, t is at one, x is at zero. Now remember, that's that vertical axis there. 
And when t is at 1 here, our y is also at 0. So there's our points. We plot our graph. Starting at t equals negative 1, we're at 0, 0. Then at negative 1 half, we're at 3 fourths, negative 1. Then we're at 1, 0 at time of 0. We're at 3 fourths, 1 at 1 half for the time. And when time is 1, we're back to 0, 0. So there's our path. So for t, from negative 1 is less than t is less than 0, x is increases to 1, y decreases to negative 1, then increases to 0. From 0 is less than t is less than 1, x is decreasing to 0 and y increases to 1, then decreases to 0. All right. Here is an example where we have two different sets of parametric equations may have the same graph or portions of the same graph. So for example, 5 and 6 eliminate the pat parameter to find the Cartesian rectangular equation of the curve. Sketch the curve and indicate the direction as the, param the parameter increases. So here, we don't have a t, we have a theta. And again, we're using sines and cosines. The easiest thetas to use would be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. All right. So they want us to change these up into Cartesian. So we solve for cosine and sine. x over 2, y over 2, plug those in. We're going to get x over 2 squared plus y over 2 squared. Now I have them lined up properly. Equal to 1. Square the 2. Move that over as 2 squared or as 4. Either one is fine. So again, we have a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 2. So when we fill in our table, that's the points we should get. So at 0, cosine of 0 is 1 times 2, 2. Sine of 0 is 0 times 2, 0. Then at pi over 2, we should be at 0, 2. At pi, we should be at negative pi, negative 2, 0. 3 pi over 2, we should be at 0, negative 2. And when we get back to 2 pi, we're at 2, 0 again. So theta equals 0, 2, 0. Theta equals pi over 2, 0, 2. Theta equals pi, negative 2, 0. Theta equals negative 3 pi over 2, 0, negative 2. And then at 2 pi, we're back to 2, 0, making a circle. And again, rotating in a counterclockwise direction. OK. All right, example 6. First, we have square roots with our t's inside. So that means we're going to have some domain restrictions. So this t has to be greater than or equal to 0 in order to take the square root. And then 4 minus t has to be set greater than or equal to 0 and solve for t. And that would be t is less than or equal to 4. So in order to make this true, our t has to go from 0 to 4 inclusively, which means we get to count the 0 and the 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if we want to turn this into Cartesian, again, x is equal to the square root of t. You have to solve for t, so I squared both sides. Then I'm going to take, since t is equal to x squared, we're going to substitute it in for that t right there. So y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now, technically, this is a Cartesian equation. But traditionally, we don't like to keep the square root if we don't have to, so we square both sides add the x squared over here, and lo and behold, we, got, we have the exact same Cartesian equation as an example 5. Now, don't go jumping you know, to your graph right away and draw a circle here. We have to realize that time goes from 0 to 4 only. So here, when I put 0 in for t, the square root of 0 is 0, the square, and then 4 minus 0 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. I'm starting at 0, 2. I'm starting up here. Okay. When t is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. 
4 minus 1 is 3, y is the square root of 3. So I'm at 1, square root of 3. So now this appears to be going in a clockwise direction. We put in a 2, square root of 2, and 4 minus 2 is the square root of 2 as well. They're both radical 2. There's that position right there. Then when we have a 3, the square root of 3, 4 minus 3 is 1, so the square root of 1 is 1 for y. We're at radical 3, 1. And then when we put 4 in for t, that's the square root of 4 is 2 for the x, 0 for the y. And here, I only have a fourth of the circle. And it's also going in the opposite direction. But again, these two parametric equations represented the same type of graph. All right. And again, we have that domain restriction on your t, which only gave us a quarter of the circle. Finding parametric equations, example 7. Find the set of parametric equations given that t is equal to negative 1 at the point negative 2 comma negative 7 for the equation y equals 4x plus 1. All right, so t equals 1 when we're at negative 2, negative 7, so I plot at that point. And then for my equation, y equals 4x plus 1, that has a y-intercept at 1 and a slope of 4. Or I can start down here and say go up 4 to the right 1. And we could say that happened at t equals 0. Again, we'll go up 4 to the right 1. We're at 0, 1, and we'll say that happens at t equals 1. Up 4 to the right 1. There's my next point at 1, 5 for t equals 2. So there's my line. This is the direction in which I graphed it. And now I'm going to fill in my table and start to create my parametric equation. So t equals negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. x equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So the first thing I notice here is that my x's are all counting by 1. That's your difference test, your first level difference test, which means my x of t must have a slope of 1. And so when t is negative 1, i got to get to negative 2. When t is 0, i got to get to negative 1. When t is 1, I have to get to 0. When t is 2, I have to get to 1. So basically, my equation for x is to start with the t and then subtract 1. So that's my x of t equation. Now, to find y, I could do the same thing, or I could go grab y equals 4x plus 1 and substitute the t minus 1 in for the x, because that's technically what my x function is. So then 4 times t minus 1 plus 1, well, that's 4t minus 4 plus the 1 is 4t minus 3. Again, I could get the same thing using the y column. Notice that all my y's are increasing by 4. That's the slope, 4. So using my t values, multiplying this by 4, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, but I have to get to negative 7, so I have to subtract 3. 0 times 4 is 0. I have to get to negative 3, subtract 3. 1 times 4 is 4, subtract 3 to 1. 2 times 4 is 8, subtract 3 to 5. And that's how you can come up with that equation right there. Okay. Now, you could get another pair. We could look at x of t equals 2t. So here, we could actually skip points. Okay. We could actually skip points. So if x was to equal 2t... Then I can plug that into here and come up with 8t plus 1. And if you look at this one, now when, again, this is for this, don't look at this chart here. When t is equal to negative 1, I'm still at the same point, negative 2, negative 7. When t is at 0, 0 times 2 is 0. That's the 0, 1 right here. 
Okay, again, you're not using those T's. These are totally different. That's why these are black, not blue. And when T is equal to 1, that would be 2 for your X and then 2, 9. Well, looking at this line here, I could go up 4 and to the right 1, and that would put me at 9 at 2, 9. That's just another point up here. So again, two different parametric equations representing the same line. So if I wanted to put in t for 3 here, use these points here, I come up with the same values. So I'm looking at when we're going from negative 2, 0, and 2, counting by 2s, like going every other one. And then I can come up with another set of parametric equations. Okay, example 8. A, pro a projectile is fired with initial velocity of V sub 0 meters per second at an angle beta above the horizon with no air resistance. Then its position after t seconds is given by the parametric equation x equals the initial velocity V sub 0 times cosine beta times t and y is equal to V sub 0 times sine of beta times t minus 4.9 squared. Well, we're going to let beta be 20 degrees and my V sub zero should be 300 meters. There should be per second there. I forgot to type that in. So if you could do that for me, I appreciate it. When will the bullet hit the ground? Well, hitting the ground means that Y has to be equal to zero. So let's set this equation equal to zero, substitute in this information, and solve for Y. Or excuse me, solve for T. So 300 goes in for C V sub 0, sine of 20 times T minus 4.9 T squared. So I can factor out a T. T equals 0 is a possibility. Well, not really, because then we haven't fired the gun yet. So let's take the 300 sine 20 minus 4.9 T, set that equal to 0, and solve it. So I add over the 4.9t, divide over the 4.9 back. There's my answer for t. Decimal approximation, make sure you put your mode into decimal mode, is about 20.9 seconds. How far from the gun will the bullet hit the ground? Now we're talking the x-axis. So let's take x, plug in 300 for v sub 0, cosine of 20, times t, which we just found, 300 times sine 20, divided by 4.9, crunch that all in the calculator. Wow, that bullet went 5,903 meters. What was the maximum height reached by the bullet? Okay, that's y, but we gotta take its derivative, so we have to take y, find y prime and set it equal to zero. Find that critical number, which is your t, and then plug it back into the original equation for y, and that's going to be your height. So if we take the derivative of y, so y prime here would be 300 sine of 20, the t, the derivative of t is just 1, and then here minus, bring down the 2, so that's 9.8 times t. So again, set equal to 0, add over the 9.8, and then divide over the 9.8. There's our t value. And then we go back and plug it back into our original equation for y, which is here. So we got to put it into those two places for t. So 300 sine of 20 degrees times t minus 4.9 times our t squared, 300 times sine 20 over 9.8, which we just acquired here. Let the calculator crunch that out. And that was approximately a maximum height of 537 meters. All right, so that will take care of 10.1. We're going to take care of 10.2 in ju just a second.